This is the first real successful bathymetry mapping test of my autonomous boat project, Gumption Trap 2. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate creating a map of a small section of this lake. This is the map that I produced on this run. Uh, luckily, since the world is flat, I can assume that longitude and latitude are a valid map at the same coordinate scale. And then on the z-axis is my depth. Uh, in millimeters actually. So the maximum depth recorded this run kind of near the middle was around 8 meters. That's about 25 feet. Over in this yellow portion is where I started the mission out so the depth is near zero there. And the path the boat took was kind of a zigzag along. This is the data combined from both missions. I did run it back twice start to finish back to back and this is the map that I produced via MATLAB. Um, in the future, I'm actually gonna move away from MATLAB and just redo this program in Python, but for now, this is what it looks like. So these black data points along the bottom are the actual measurements that I took via the sonar at their real GPS coordinates and the given depth that that produced. And then the surface that you see is extrapolated between all of those points so this output is essentially an XYZ scatter plot, kind of like a point cloud, and the surface is just extrapolated between everything. Um, I joke about the world being flat, but in reality, right now, the X, Y, and Z are not perfectly scaled to each other. Um, I could do some math to improve that, but I'll probably do so after I switch this to a Python program. turn eventually. <laughs> this is a man-made lake dammed at both ends of a natural river. So uh, this plot's not all that exciting, but it's about what you'd expect, some kind of general lumpiness amongst a sort of U shape along the bottom of this river. So right along the center of the channel, in this back part that was the deepest, it was roughly in the 7 meter range, a couple of points in the near 8 mark, uh, that's about 25 feet again, and then up towards the shores we were seeing about 6, 5.5 meters. Notably it was extremely windy on the day of this mission. The vehicle performed remarkably well in crosswinds, headwinds, and tailwinds thanks to the design of the hull being as low in the water as possible to minimize the area exposed to the wind. Since the last update, I've made a few minor software improvements and I've replaced the belt-driven rudder system with a linkage-driven system to solve the issues of the belt slipping. This modification was just a bolt-on solution with the minimal amount of changing as possible to get it in the water and testing. Um, I just added one adapter into the existing rudder mount to allow me to run it off the linkage where the pulley used to mount to. And then I created a new mount, also 3D printed out a PETG for uh, UV resistance and heat resistance in the sun. Uh, to adapt the servo position. So that allowed me to test the servo linkage without totally redoing the rudder. Since those mounts are glued into the rudder, it's hard to modify that without totally rebuilding the rudder system. But now that I know it worked pretty well, I am going to optimize the rudders and reprint those mounts along with them, um, especially the bearing situation, which is just threads riding on that sheet metal. Not so great right now. Um, so now that I know that worked, I'll optimize that better in the next run. Uh, 
A major flaw in this new linkage system is just the play that you can see right there. That's mainly due to the lack of a real bearing on the interface between the threaded bolt and the sheet metal, which is what the rudder is actually riding on. Um, in the future, I plan to replace that with a real bearing or a bushing or something better. But for now, uh, that does introduce a bit of slack where previously the belt just was tensioned so much that it kept that bolt pulled against one end of the hole where the uh, threads ride on the sheet metal. Um, but once I improve that bearing situation, I should be able to eliminate a lot of that play. This map on the left side of the screen is the planned plot in the thin black line just directly between all the waypoints starting here, zigzagging across as the crow flies. The blue line and green line are the actual recorded data from the two runs. I did run the exact same mission twice back to back. And over here on the right side of the screen I have a couple of other various plots. This top one actual versus goal heading the orange line is the goal heading, which is calculated based on the current position and the goal position, one of these waypoints. And then the actual heading, that blue line, is the compass heading that the boat is actually facing in that moment. The PID steering output is scaled from 100% to minus 100%. You can think of that as like a hard left turn, hard right turn, or somewhere in the middle is zero straight ahead. The motor PWM is the raw signals being sent to the left and right motor. There are two motors which are both bi-directional ESCs that allow for differential thrust and reverse. And the last plot is the rudder PWM. So most of the time it's just making fine adjustments with the rudder only. You can see this blue line is pretty much constantly making small changes. And the motors are pretty much always pegged at 100%. If I zoom into this chart, you can see both motors are pretty much pegged, except for where it starts to turn, it'll throttle down one motor. Uh, the rudder, it is always continuously making very fine adjustments. That is gonna be a little bit of an issue with the play in the rudder system that I showed in the last clip. Uh, you can see that all of these little adjustments, it's making some pretty significant changes but that mechanically almost acts as like a high pass filter in a way and that the very fine adjustments kind of don't take up all of the backlash. So that's something I'll have to think about. Uh, these sharp changes, by the way, are where it reaches one of the waypoints in the corner and it changes the goal heading. Um, you can actually see that up here. So on most of these straightaways, like take this long first one, for example, the goal heading is constantly changing because the boat is translating a little bit in the wind and currents relative to its waypoint and so it's always updating the heading to be pointing exactly at the waypoint. It doesn't do anything software wise to compensate for wind or cross currents, it just always keeps itself pointed right at the waypoint. Uh, these sudden jumps right here, like you're seeing there, it doesn't show up as obviously on this plot, except for maybe right here. Uh, there is a waypoint. This isn't just a straight line. It's point, 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 and then it's point, point, point. If you can see the mouse cursor, there's another point in the middle. So the heading updates. Now, I think the most notable thing from this plot is that the boat really kind of struggled on these short legs. Uh, notice this green line, that's the first time it ran the mission. It was making some wild S turns before it might finally made it to the point. Uh, so the way the point calculation works, when the distance reaches below a certain threshold, it moves on to the next point. Uh, but after this waypoint in this corner became its goal, Following this green line, it started doing some crazy S turns, like the PID uh, was very poorly tuned for these short turns. And the reason that is a problem, I believe, on the short turns, but not these long sections, where it stayed pretty straight, 
um, is because when the boat translates a little bit laterally on the short turns, that has a high effect on the angle relative to the point. Um, so the PID definitely definitely needs some tuning. Uh, the play in the rudder system does not help there. And relative to the last time that I ran this boat, I have not changed the PID gains, but my mechanical changes to the rudder basically took it from a one to two reduction, two to one rather, on that old belt drive to a one to one when the pulley is, or rather when the linkage is roughly centered. So I've effectively doubled my proportional gain uh, mechanically, but left it the same in software. So some tuning could definitely help there. Taking off the play could definitely help there. Uh, but in all cases, it did eventually kind of straighten out and reach the waypoint. Uh, let me zoom into what the actual versus goal heading was doing in that area. Timestamp wise, that corresponds to this region. Uh, so you can see the goal heading is kind of oscillating and that is because the boat was translating laterally side to side and the goal heading always wants to keep it pointed towards the point. So that in orange is the goal heading and the blue is the actual there which is oscillating all over the place. Uh, so that's definitely in need of some PID tuning. Um, I can also see the raw PID output was pegged at basically bouncing between minus 100% and positive 100% in that case. And that's not ideal. Uh, if I look at the motor PWM, I can see that the differential thrust was really kicking in in those cases uh, with one motor being throttled all the way to zero, or rather full speed in reverse, which is 1000 microseconds and full speed forward is 2000 microseconds. Ideally, most of the time, both motors should just be pegged at full throttle. Um, and then the rudder. So the rudder does a pretty good job making fine, adju fine adjustments on the long straightaways. And then during the sharp turns, the rudder maxes out. And the way my code works, the PID output causes the differential thrust to kick in only after the rudder is already at its hard stop. Uh, so when you see the rudder reach a hard stop here, that's when the motors start kicking all the way into reverse. I would also like to very quickly point out that this boat was in auto mode the entire time, with the exception of in this section. So on the short leg here, you can see the green line was making some S turns and it got really close to a bunch of paddle borders here in this corner. I was hoping it would recover on its own and make it onto the longer leg, uh, but it didn't quite. So I took over manual control and I drove it around a little bit here this way until I set it back into auto mode, it did another little loop-de-loop -loop, thanks to the badly tuned PID, and then it went on its way. Uh, on all of the rest of the plots, that shows up as a gap right here, a gap in the data there, 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 uh, all the way vertically down all four because my code just cuts out the data for the manual mode. This clip shows one of the crazy S turns going on on one of the shorter legs. Um, I think what I'll do to fix that before the next run, in addition to hardware fixes to reduce the amount of play in the bearings, is I'll reduce the proportional gain by about half to adjust for the mechanical differences from what it was last time it was performing a little bit better than this, uh, and I'll probably drop the integral gain a little bit too. Here's my CAD model. I initially had this belt driven rudder uh, with the servo just directly driving a belt here over to a pulley. Uh, the two rudders are linked with this tie rod, but 
now I've deleted that and I have this new mount for the same servo that attaches it to, to a short linkage arm uh, which then goes into a bolt-on adapter into the existing rudder mount that drives the servo. So that worked out pretty well except for the amount of play in it which again although not shown in this model the actual bearing for this surface is just a quarter 20 bolt whose threads are riding on this hole and that's not that great of a fit it's a quarter inch hole in what is this I believe like eighth inch plywood excuse me yeah eighth inch aluminum not plywood obviously but uh, yeah so that's definitely an area for improvement and the servo system overall I think the linkage is a great improvement over the belt just because I don't have to deal with that nightmare of it slipping but now that I know that works pretty well, I have some thoughts for how to improve the entire rudder system in general. So check back on that for the next time I post an update to this project. These are the graphs showing the power consumption and production over time. Uh, in this top one, the black line is the solar panel current production. So most of the time that was producing around 11 and a half amps or so, gradually declining as the sun set. Uh, I did record this mission in fall, so the solar power is not what it could be here in central Texas. Uh, the green line is the net power black is produced and blue is consumed So most of this mission we were burning around four amps or so with my 20 amp hour Capacity in the batteries. I could sustain that for around five hours uh, In my previous run. I was a lot closer to a one-to-one -one production consumption in more ideal settings in the about the peak of the summer uh, but these temporary spikes you see in this chart are, for one, uh, when I flipped it into manual mode, and also during the really sharp turns, it draws uh, the throttle way back on one motor when it goes into differential thrust. So, so when one motor basically slows to zero, the current draw from that ESC also drops a lot. So that'll have an effect on the current draw here, which you'll see during the really sharp turns periodically. Uh, similarly, the battery voltage, you'll see it start at around 14 and a half volts. Normally, that's close to full for these batteries. And it finished around 14.2 volts, a little less than it started. Uh, obviously there's a big drop while the motors are actually running and that's also affected by uh, the state of the ESCs when the motors are making a sharp turn and one of them cuts to zero. This middle section by the way is where I stopped and had the boat kind of just sitting around between runs. I did do two of the same run back to back. But in general with the battery voltage you'll see a steady decline over time based on the fact that my net current was negative most of the time, a uh, slight current out of the battery, positive would be power going into the battery, and the voltage spikes correspond with the uh, turns where one motor slowed drastically to draw no current. So on a nice beautiful summer day, this can run all day, but uh, later in the fall like it is now, I'm limited to maybe five or six hours of run time. With known GPS coordinates and timestamps, I was able to calculate the average speed at around 225 knots on the uh, downwind and 175 on the upwind. Uh, but anyway, that's about all I've got for now, so thanks y'all for watching.